Welcome, everybody. up on today's show i'll be joined with my wonderful friend she's not that person down becky common welcome to the show thank you so much for inviting me so some love everybody thank you it's good to see you thank you how have you been doing i'm good thank you still fighting but good 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 so becky um why we brought you on the show today is in relation to uh, as a lone parent there's an issue between your hard working mom you end very well, but for you to end or have the opportunity to get a mortgage, there's some kind of discrimination in the process. Would that be your kind of argumentation on this? Well, absolutely. I think my story proves it. Um, my story began nine months ago, Chris, when I was finally in the position to apply for a mortgage, having saved up 10% deposit for a house price. Um, and I started applying to the banks. Um, I even applied to the vulture lenders. Okay. to be met with decline after decline. Um, in January of this year, um, when I heard uh, Housing Minister Owen Murphy okay. um, announce a new scheme, which would be for families who, and low earners, who were for whatever reason being declined by the banks and they weren't being approved by the harsh criteria required. Mm -hmm. um, on February the 1st, the scheme launched and I applied for it. Um, and six weeks later, I was told I was also declined. Okay. So, ironically, I didn't earn enough for the banks to approve me. However, I earned too much for the Rebuilding Ireland Home Loan Scheme. Okay. So, it's kind of left me in limbo and many others. Yeah, but, yeah, because you have to look at the way the bank does give loan as well. The bank could be different the way they give their loan. And this other scheme could be different from the way they give their loan. So, do you end well in your own way as to the way you work? Do you feel you end well? Absolutely. I mean, I've saved €34,000. Mm. That's not done easily overnight. And I also made a choice to be a working parent, to be independent and stand on my own two feet. I've never claimed any kind of social housing or half that's been available to me and I've been entitled to. Mm. I've chosen to stand on my own two feet and I'm being punished for that. The reason why I kept for the applaud was, you know, it's just not easy for a single mom to kind of, you know, take a step and, and go out there to really work, you know. Um, I'm, I'm nothing against women who took the time to look after the kids and, you know, make sure their kids, you know, grow up the right way. Mm -hmm. But you take it another step further, I think you should be encouraged, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to kind of encourage all other people to step up as well. So what would be your main focus in your campaign as to, as a lone parent, what should a bank be doing? Should they be giving access to loan like yourself? Can you not consider why the bank is kind of thinking, well, look, would that not be too much for you to carry on, even though you've mentioned that you've made savings and all of that? What would be your opinion on that? Well, the banks need to lower their criteria. It's, it's too tight. Basically, if people are able to pay the extortionate rent prices that be enforced on us yeah. at present, they have affordability. They're able to show, if they're able to save up 10% of their house price, you know, within reason, they don't have credit cards or loans, why shouldn't they have an opportunity to have their own home and work for it and pay for it? Mm. The government as well need to release a scheme that's transparent, unlike the Rebuilding Ireland Home Loan that proves it's, it's not working. Okay. There is absolutely no transparency around it. The ministers need to take accountability as well instead of ignoring it. Um, I have been on many media campaigns now trying to highlight the fact that the scheme is not working yeah. and bringing forward the irregularities around it. However, they're being ignored. Yeah, but for some of the things I even read myself, you know, some some people are saying that the figures are not had, they're not had had enough in terms of saying that okay, this is the amount of people who are actually going for this purpose. This is not working. So, what will be your take on that as well? Well, Minister Murphy has kind of never really had a, a good impression of figures, has he? According yeah. to the homeless <laughs> crisis, in fairness. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, according to the latest one, it's thirty percent of mm -hmm. approval rates. True. 
Um, so people are going into their county councils, they're being approved by their county council and then they're being declined at a second rate by the underwriter. Um, it seems to be there's a different assessment going on with the underwriter. Yeah. There's a different set of criteria being used to assess people. Mm. Such as me, I met all eligibility criteria, but they declined me based on a P60 from 2017 with overtime worked. Wow. That shouldn't be, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so where do you want where do you want to see government stand on, on this issue? Because you're the face of women, you know, coming out there to take the bold step to really come out there and say this things. Not every woman will come out and do that. You no. know, well, fair play to yourself for that, you know. So what do you want government to actually do? Because I still go back to the question I ask you for women like you to come out to work and say you should be encouraged. So what do you want government to actually do for this? Well, I'd like to say I'm not just a woman who is facing the campaign. I have many families, married couples behind me who have also met criteria and haven't been given a mortgage. They've been wrongly declined. Mm -hmm. I would like the government to um, take some accountability around this scheme and change it so it's actually working. It's more transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and like in the long run, it's going to encourage people, give people an initiative to work for what they have and pay for what they have. True. And do you think should everyone in the country own a, you know, own a mortgage? Absolutely not. If you work hard for it and you're able to afford it, yes. Everyone deserves a permanent home. My daughter deserves a permanent home. I've worked hard True. to have my home. I've worked for five years, Chris, to save up. Mm. You know, I deserve my home. But what do you think government should do with a bank in relation to, to the mortgage? Because the mortgage at the moment, that's very much expensive right, right now for you to take on a mortgage. So what would you like government to do in terms of the rates? Maybe the bank are looking at, okay, if, we, if you're going to take a rate of something maybe around to around 40 or to around 50,000, you have 45 minutes, I mean 40, 40, 45,000, you know, saved. How are the bank going to work with you in that case? Because they felt like when, when you are two, it's easier for you to meet the criteria. But if you're one, the, the, you know, the body will be that much for you. Don't you, don't you think that could be something that, that might have? Yeah, well, the way I look at it, I've always paid a, a minimum of 1,400 euro rent. Hmm. There is no mortgage unless I buy a massive house in Kalini that's going to be 1,400. I have met affordability. I've been able to pay it on my own for the last five years. Yeah. You know, I'm in permanent pensionable employment. Mm. The government needs to release a scheme that actually works instead of one that's a clever ploy okay. to make them believe that actually something is being done. Okay. It's not. Okay, okay. we're still going to have you on, on the show based on that. Okay, so stay, stay, stay with us. Stay to come on the show. We go, come on, show some love for my wonderful guest on the show. Okay, okay. coming up on the show, later on, I'll be joined with my two wonderful friends. Uh, I won't give them away, but just stay tuned. They'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, first of all, congratulations there to you, at, at, at Adako. Is that correct? Yes, yes it is. Thank you. from Nigeria, the, the state, isn't it? Yes, I'm from Nigeria. So good to see you. Congratulations you. to this wonderful book, Mission Critical Messenger. Before we go, so tell us about yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. You know my name already. My name is Adako Zudo. Yeah. Um, I am a diversity and inclusion consultant. I know it's a big word, but, just, but that really means that I organize Oh, uh, I provide diversity and inclusion events and programs okay. for, for the public and the private okay. sector. Yeah, and uh, I'm also a life and career coach. Oh, good. Uh, I'm a mom of three, amazing girls. <laughs> wow, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, and an author, okay. and uh, 
Yeah, so much, so much stuff to learn in my life. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. You're for a dancer. Me. You're from France, are you? Yeah. Um, so tell us about yourself a little bit. So I was born and raised in France. My parents were from the Caribbean, so wow. Guadeloupe and Dominica. Wow. And yeah, I'm based in Cork, and uh, I run dance classes. So for all age, from seven years old up to sixty years old, until you can dance, actually. Wow. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for coming on the show. Now, Adika, let me come back to yourself. What inspires you to go into writing this book? Hmm, that's a very good question because uh, that book was actually, you know, by accident. I I was in America last two years for a training, and um, a, a lady. I was so inspired by the event, and uh, she offered some of us the opportunity to leave our dream and one of my dreams has always been to share a story mm. and share my passion um i've been in ireland for 18 years and my background has always been in the corporate but i knew that that was not my dream i mm. knew that i didn't see myself in the corporate sector 10 years back that down the line so i left all that and followed you know the community sector that's where my that, that makes my heart sing mm. that makes me happy to serve to serve people mm. and to put a, a, a smile on the face. Wow, amazing. Well, smile on the face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, then all that, yeah. we'll, talk, we'll talk more about it because I really, really want to see more about this. You know, the special things I like about women these days, you know, you are with, like for this show, we always bring women a lot more who <laughs> actually author. And it's great, you know, it tells how much women fight to want to do something. Like uh, Re Rebecca mentioned about the lone pair parent, parent thing, uh, we get a lot of women who are home trying to take care of their kids, but she moved one step further to go work and save money. And in the end, the outcome of it is not what she wanted, you know? So mm -hmm. we'll come about that, you know? Let me move down to uh, Karim, because uh, I wish we could just do some dancing on yeah, the show today, like, you know? Oh, <laughs> 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 It'll be good. Come on, let's talk about yourself, you know? What, what inspires to go into, in, I mean, into dancing in the first place? So I've always been dancing. I was born on Carnival Day mm. in the Caribbean. <laughs> this is Carnival yeah, Day. Yeah, so true, true. My mom used to say I'm the reincarnation. <laughs> 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 I've always danced. I start very young at six years old. Yeah. And I stayed in a group for 15 years mm. until I moved to Ireland. Yeah. So when I happened to Cork, it was really empty. Like, really really empty sure. and this is when i had the vision to open my own and hmm. what i did wow amazing 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 <laughs> wonderful Super <laughs> love. Super <laughs> let me come back quickly then to uh Re rebecca rebecca in terms of the mortgage thing that we're talking about in the end of the show um what do you think the bank are doing for younger younger pay people do you think that uh the younger people are going into more debt they're not giving the opportunity and they're hard working people they they're supposed to be the future of the country. What is your take on that? Well, they're offering little hope, really, to young people like myself. And like in my case as well, like they're forcing people onto social supplements and mm. having no option but to avail of social housing or HAP schemes. Um, and even in regards to applying for a mortgage, some people are, are accepting as little as 22 euro face supplement a week, mm. and that's leading them to a decline. Wow. However, if they were to receive a mortgage, they wouldn't even be eligible for the FIS. Yeah. So it's kind of a... It's up, up and down, yeah. kind of stable there. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I think we, on your book, what are the things people should read about this wonderful book? Because it really inspires you. Talking about community, that's where your heart is. What should people see about this mission critical messages? What should people look out for? Yeah, um, I, basically, I believe that every one of us in, in life we have all gone through something yes and we have all come out on the other side true and we all have a message mm. and if, once you have a message you are automatically a messenger mm. so use your story you have a story we all have a story so i just shared my story to with the world you never know who's who, who can who will connect with it mm -hmm. who it will inspire and who it could change their lives mm. so basically I, I want people to you know reach into your story you experience that for a reason True. don't keep it to yourself share it because mm. i'm sure it's going to change somebody's life thank you all of you because you can have a look at it Now, <laughs> when you're doing your reading, you're dancing, you burn calories, you do all this thing. 
What prompts you to do all of this dancing? Come on, give us some, because we've seen you on the street, we've seen you on cars, we've yes. seen you on all <laughs> different areas. So give us some insight. So it comes from within, actually. Mm -hmm. So I have a great energy, and I feel it. And I want to join this beautiful lady in saying it's all about sharing. Mm -hmm. So when you have something, you just have to give out, because anyone somewhere wants to take and and yeah, so... Good. And you work with different age groups as well? Yes. What kind of age group would, would you work with? So my youngest kid is actually five. Wow, I saw them. I saw, actually, we're going yes. to play some of those one later course. on. Yeah, yeah. How do you inspire these kids? Because now they're on holiday now. You're keeping them busy. You're give, keeping them worked out. How do you engage with them as much as you can? I think kids are great to catch because as a kid, I started as well around six. When you're focused into something, you're like committed. You don't have all the distraction, work, homework. Well, you do have homework, but like the society problems, kids, they don't have to. All they have to do is wake up, go to school, go back home, and go to dance. So, wow, this amazing. Is, uh, come on, come on. Let me come back to you quickly there. Um, so, for younger people, we know the story. We, 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 we're, we're trying to reach out to government to really, really look into to this scheme and find a way to kind of give mostly young parents the opportunity to encourage them. But one thing that's sticky bothering my mind as well is, from experience, the bank gave loan mostly to couple, or, you know, whichever way. So long as you're two couple, the bank view would be that would be more safer rather than be able to uh, give a loan to just one person. Do you not think there's a burden on that? No, not really. Like, I bring back to the reference the fact I paid private rent yeah. for the last five years. And okay. the minimum I've ever paid is 1400 while saving mm -hmm. up €34,000. Mm. Um, that shows affordability in itself. I'm also in permanent pensionable employment within the HSE. So, therefore, you know... The mathematics is there. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. No, I just want to be fair and ask you the question. <laughs> I don't want people to say, oh, because we shouldn't know. But that's the truth, because the bank would look at it. Okay, for example, if you're earning, if you're two couple, you're earning two grand a, uh, you know, yeah. a, uh, a month each. That's 4K a month, mathematics, Chris, employment. Anyway, so in that 4K, they feel like if you're taking a mortgage of 1,800, you have family, kids, and all of that, you still get most kind of savings. So this is where I think the bank will become coming from. But mm -hmm. if you end it in a way that you feel, look, I'm capable to actually afford it. If I can pay a rent price of 1,400, why can't I not just, you know, go for a mortgage that at least in the end, this will be mine. Come on, show some love for this for that. I, I, think, I think that makes sense, you know? So um, we're gonna go on a quick break because the guys are sick, you know what I mean? When we come back, we'll touch on that, touch on it, and then we'll wrap things up. We'll be right back after this. Come on, show some love, everybody. <laughs> things off there um let me just talk about one chapter on your book there live your dream that's mm -hmm. one of the chapters on your yes, book can yeah. you give us a little bit insight on that please yeah so it's uh, the it's it's really about you know we have to live our dream mm. life is too short sure. to live you know a miserable life mm. so and every one of us you know just has 
a plant cannot grow uh, without a seed. Mm. You know, we all have that seed of greatness inside of us. Mm. It, not every, everyone is going to be Barack Obama or, you know, you know sure. but we all have something that we can give. Mm. Like, I really admire my dear friend here. Yes, Rebecca, yeah? Yes, yeah, so, you know, her, her, that, that's, that, that's her courage. That's something in her, burning in her to share that. Sure. So it may not be a dream in the sense of, you know, it may, may, she didn't want to be in that in that stage, yeah. but it's like it's the vision for for for, for people mm. to come. Mm. So that's really what what it's about. It's all about you know we can live our dream, whatever it is that is in, in us, we can activate that mm. and achieve the best. Not, not just for us, right. but for the world. Right. 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 Rebecca Green, she wants to own her own property. Yes, yes. 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 Rebecca Green, she wants to own her own class and make music for everybody. Yeah. And Adeku wants to make sure the message gets across to everybody. Yeah. We all mm -hmm. like the messengers. Come on, show some love, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Karim, just before we go there, um, today you are part of the women here today. You are talking about what inspires you, what encourages you, what you want to change society. What did you take out of everything we're sharing here today? Sorry, can you... So what question? did you take out of everything we're sharing here today? What did you take out of it? Oh, it's um, that living your dream is possible. Taking your own uh, responsibility, take your own passion to another level, it's possible. And living for a cause as well. Yeah. When you have a cause, just fight for it if you think it's fair. And you still got to help out someone out there. So. Wow, women with power. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rebecca, one more last word before we wrap this up. We're running out of time today. What would be your message today? Yeah. Wonderful women on this show. Message to government. Message to single mom out there. Hardworking women out there. What would be your message as part of your campaign? Keep fighting. Keep shouting. Don't stop. Um, the government need to release the scheme because rebuilding Ireland clearly isn't working. Mm. So they need to release something that works and actually um, encourages people to work and pay their way. Wow, amazing. Come on, that is it. <laughs> All right, this is how we're going to wrap this up to go. First, I want to say thank you to Rebecca, everybody. <laughs> to auto, to dancing. Find something out there that you think is best for you. And keep watching the show and keep getting in touch every week on what you think you would like to see on the show. Take care. And from every one of us in the studio, God bless. See you next week. Take care. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.